Picture this. You're in a drab office. The kind where excitement goes to die. People are typing away, scribbling on papers, doing whatever it takes to avoid eye contact with the boss. Then there's this one dude, Dave, who spends more time looking at the wall than at his actual work. Probably has better wallpaper at home. Dave's minding his own business, probably updating his fantasy football lineup, when he notices something funky on the wall. Now, this isn't your run-of-the-mill funky. This is, what the heck is going on, funky. Dave's staring at his laptop, then at the wall, then back at his laptop like he's watching a tennis match on Fast Forward. Lo and behold, there's his mouse cursor, chilling on the wall like it's got a vacation home there. His excitement over a rogue cursor shows this is the most action he's seen all week. Dave's mind is blown, and he's grinning like he just discovered the office's secret stash of Red Bull. But Dave's not content with just staring at his newfound wall buddy. Oh no, he's got a mischievous glint in his eye. He wants to see if he can wreak havoc with this digital graffiti, so, he takes control, dragging that cursor down the wall like he's Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel. Next target? A sad little paper cup sitting innocently on his desk. With a tap of his touchpad, Dave sends that cup tumbling, unleashing a flood of tea like it's the Great Boston Tea Party all over again. Cue the collective gasps from his co-workers. Their office gossip must be real dry if they're getting excited about spilled tea. Dave plays it cool though, like he meant to do it all along, casually wiping up the mess like a seasoned barista. And just like that, Dave's on top of the world. But he's not done yet. Oh no. There's a whole office full of unsuspecting objects just waiting to feel the wrath of his newfound power. Watch out, world. Dave's got a cursor and he's not afraid to use it. The most unrealistic part of this movie so far is everyone having working laptops. So, our dude, Dave, is just minding his own business at his desk, probably daydreaming about what he's gonna have for lunch when he spots this letter staring at him like it's got a bone to pick. Dave's like, all right, letter, what do you want? And he grabs that arrow thingy because, you know, technology and stuff, and starts poking around. Lo and behold, the arrow magically turns into this fancy eye thing as it gets close to the text. It's like watching a magic show, but with less rabbits and more passive-aggressive office memos. So, what's the letter about? Oh, just the usual request to take a hit for being fashionably late to work. But Dave's not having it. He's like, not today, corporate overlords. He goes full rebel mode, deleting lines left and right and even throws in a little message about his boss being as pleasant as a root canal. His cursor skills are on point, his social skills? Well, not so much. After he's done giving that letter a makeover, Dave's giggling like he just heard the world's corniest dad joke, but then reality hits him like a ton of bricks when he realizes his laughter's disrupting the office harmony. But Dave's not one to dwell on awkwardness. Nope, he's got bigger fish to fry. Or in this case, a crush to impress. He struts out into the hallway laptop in hand, and spots this vision of loveliness in the next room. He plops himself down in front of her room like he's suddenly got urgent business to attend to. But let's be real, he's more interested in her than his spreadsheet. And just when you think Dave couldn't get any sneakier, he starts playing with that cursor again. Before you know it, he's sliding that cursor across her desk, like he's trying to set a record for the most awkward flirtation ever. And then, bam, he goes for the ultimate sneak attack aiming that cursor where no cursor should ever go. Let's just say, things get a little spicy, and not in the good way. But hey, you gotta give the guy points for creativity, right? He's like a kid with a new toy, except his toy is the potential for a lawsuit. But Dave doesn't stop there. He starts doing some very important mouse pad rubbing. Yeah, you heard me right. He's giving that thing a good old rub like it owes him money, all while sneakily peeping at the girl across the room. Smooth move, Dave. But here's where things take a turn for the weird. The girl starts breathing like she just ran a marathon and suddenly she's making noises like a distressed whale. And all because Dave's got a need for speed on that mouse pad. Who knew office supplies could be so darn arousing? Next thing you know, she's sprinting to the bathroom like she just downed a gallon of expired milk. And Dave's sitting there with a grin like he just won the office Olympics for weirdest talent. But Dave's not done causing chaos. Oh no. He's got bigger plans. He saunters out to find his buddy, who's busy charming not one, but two ladies. Classic Dave move, interrupting a potential love fest for some emergency gossip. So, they head up to the rooftop, because where else would you spill top secret info? Dave's all like, bro, you won't believe what I found. And before his friend can even process it, Dave's out here editing signs like he's a graffiti artist with a digital pen. 
His friend's freaking out like he just saw a ghost, but Dave's not satisfied yet. Oh no, he's gotta one-up himself. He whips out his magical program and starts playing God with a nearby parked car, shrinking it down to Hot Wheels size. He's like those IT guys everyone loves to avoid, but they somehow end up with the coolest and creepiest tech. His friend's losing his mind, talking about unlimited power and all that jazz, while Dave's starting to sweat bullets. Because you see, Dave's starting to realize that maybe, just maybe, he's stumbled upon something way bigger than he bargained for. And suddenly, that uneasy feeling in his gut is growing faster than Dave's ego at an open bar. So, our dude's friend Ted comes up with this genius plan straight out of a B-movie. He's like, bro, we're gonna stroll into a bank, flex our digital muscles, and threaten to turn the place into a pile of rubble unless they hand over the dough. This may be the first time Dave regrets discovering this magical laptop, probably more than his last internet search history. And get this, after they get the cash, Ted's all like, let's blow the joint anyway, just to cover our tracks. Talk about going from zero to Bond villain real quick. But our guy, Dave, ain't feeling it. Nope, he's giving Ted the side eye like he just suggested they start a lemonade stand in Antarctica. Meanwhile, back on planet Earth, the poor sap who owns the shrunken car is freaking out like he just witnessed a magic trick gone horribly wrong. I mean, who wouldn't be surprised to find their ride replaced with a toy straight out of a kinder egg? But Ted's not done dreaming big. Oh no, he's got delusions of grandeur that would make Napoleon blush. He's out here plotting to control the whole dang world, from the lowliest criminals to the highest ranking politicians. And Dave? Well, let's just say he's starting to wish he'd stayed home and binged Netflix instead. Things take a turn for the seriously messed up when Ted starts talking about erasing armies like they're stray pixels on a computer screen. Dave's eyes are wider than dinner plates as he starts plotting his escape plan. And just when you think it can't get any weirder, Dave pulls a move straight out of the digital playbook. He hits Control plus X like he's cutting coupons on a Sunday morning. And poof, Ted's hand goes rogue, detaching from his body like a scene from a horror movie. Smooth move, Dave, smooth move. But hey, at least now he knows how to deal with pesky friends with god complexes, right? So our guy, Dave, is standing there with his jaw on the floor, eyes wide enough to fit a small planet. And then, out of nowhere, there goes his buddy's hand, sailing through the air like it's auditioning for a horror movie sequel. Talk about a handy situation. As if things couldn't get any crazier, the hand decides to take a little detour and lands smack dab on top of some poor schmuck's car leaving behind a nice little trail of blood as a parting gift. Cue the car alarm going off like it just saw a ghost. The story sounds like the plot of a bad sci-fi movie, written by a hamster on a sugar rush. But Dave's not about to stick around for the aftermath. Oh no. He's booking it out of there faster than a cat chasing a laser pointer. Meanwhile, the crowd's freaking out like they just stumbled upon a crime scene in the making. Call the cops! Call an ambulance! They're shouting, as if that's gonna bring back the rest of the body. But when they turn their accusatory gazes towards Dave, he's already one step ahead. With a flick of his wrist and a few keystrokes on his trusty laptop, he's playing digital David Copperfield, making the whole darn scene disappear faster than a magician's assistant in a box. And just like that, poof. No more hand, no more blood, no more car alarm. Dave's left standing there scratching his head like he just solved a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. But as he tucks his laptop under his arm and heads for the hills, you can bet your bottom dollar he's gonna be checking over his shoulder like a paranoid squirrel on caffeine. But hey, at least now he's got a killer story to tell at the next office party, right? Buckle up, cause things are about to take a wild turn. So, our guy Dave is standing there like a lost puppy in the middle of the road, waving his hand like he's hailing a cab in New York City. And wouldn't you know it, a car actually shows up, like a knight in shining armor, or in this case, a Honda Civic. Dave's like, yo, I need to get to the Kremlin as fast as possible, but the driver's having none of it. He's all, dude, have you seen the traffic around there? We'd be stuck in gridlock for days. But Dave's not about to take no for an answer. Oh no, he's digging deep into his pockets, ready to throw cash at the problem like it's confetti at a parade. But alas, the driver's already piecing out with a polite, sorry not sorry. As the car disappears into the horizon, Dave's left standing there with his laptop in hand feeling like he just got stood up for prom. Poor guy can't catch a break. But just when you think it's all over, Dave stumbles upon a building that's straight out of a sci-fi movie. And wouldn't you know it, there's a giant mouse arrow hovering on the wall like it's trying to play hide and seek. Dave's spooked, 
and who can blame him? But just when he thinks he's safe, that pesky cursor shows up again, this time on the road, pointing straight at him like a neon sign saying game over. Next thing you know, Dave's hyperventilating like he just saw a ghost, and before he can even blink, that cursor's clicking away like it's playing whack-a-mole at the county fair. And just like that, poof, Dave's a goner, leaving behind nothing but a splatter of blood and a laptop that's seen better days. Talk about a plot twist. Looks like Dave's not the only one with magical powers in town. This movie went from ridiculous to absurd in about three seconds flat, and somehow managed to stay entertaining.